Hello everybody and welcome to today's conversation. We're gonna to talk today about Hi. ingredients of a bad business. So in one of my videos, I spoke to conversating around tearing down the business of somebody who's not a good business professional. And we have to take a look at people are insecure and they're not good at business and they don't do good business and they can be vindictive and then they can close down. This is how we got to this place. The fact that I have to teach you about this is a sign for you that you're in a dark place, but that's how the business evolution of society has evolved. And what I wanna to speak to on that is law and order is law and order. Just because somebody swipes your sale it's on them, not you. So for example, you're doing advertising and you meet with this person and then this person has a better sales tactic. Or they're more manipulative. So the, you can't go around and like, for example, in the dental business, I know for a fact that there were really bad dentists in this, in this, not this, I'm not going to say this city because I haven't worked with all the dentists in this city. However, in other places I've worked with some really awful dentists. And toward the end of my career, because I really didn't give a crap anymore and I really didn't care, I started saying, don't go to that dentist, which is bad business. People who, who operate under bad business in the way of a standing business, their businesses will naturally close down. So for example, your work ethic will result in results. So in the dental world, if your crown only lasts for two years, then we know you're not, you're not up to the right things when it comes to dentistry. Of course, there's a lot, this is how complicated dentistry is. Because sometimes your crown fails because you ate too much sugar. Because you're not healthy. Because you have periodontal disease and that crown in itself was a risky crown, but you wanted to go with a crown versus an extraction. That's why, that's like literally the epitome of closing down somebody else's business. You want to take a look at this and what I'm saying here and being a good person is always the way to go. And the complicated part comes into play is recognizing someone else's bad business skills. And then doing good in business. The problem is, is we've had a lot of in, um, like where someone steps in front so you're doing good business, good business, good business, good business, good business, good business. Someone over here sees it as an opportunity, stops. And then you have to do this whole like cleanup thing. Now what social media has done and what Gary Vaynerchuk has really spoke to when it comes to business is he said that the internet was going to expose each and every one of you for who you actually are. And what it did, you didn't like, the hard part about all of this was that the brainwashing tactics of the whitewashing and the cult formation of collective consciousness is the war. The looks, the money, the clout, the fame, there's only, listen to this, there's 7 billion people on the globe. There's only 17 million on TikTok. So these low class citizens are acting as if 8 billion people are watching them, but there aren't 8 billion people on TikTok. Perspective shift. So what you're dealing with in the realm of TikTok is women like Motivan who think that they've made it in the business because they have 1 million of those 17 million followers. However, all those followers aren't even real people. It's a kid's app. And if you're in the generation of millennial and Gen Z, 
There's only a, a fraction of you that actually want it to be on the platform working the influencer community. Everyone talks about TikTok like it's the death trap. However, what you're being feeded and bombarded in is content like Motivand, is content like Kim Kardashian. However, they live in their own little bubble of nonsense. However, what needs to happen for them is someone needed to come along and hand them their own ass so that they could be put in their place. Because the government was actually assisting them in growing their businesses to make it look a certain way. Because if somebody looks like they're a, it's like, a, what's it called on Google, uh, Google ads? It's not Google ads, but it's like um, Google um, reviews. If all your friends went on and told everybody what a great dentist you were, you'd probably go to that dentist. So the same thing's going on with content creators on content platform is everybody's doing the same exact thing and our, our feeds are saturated because that's the only thing that they're producing because they think that it's bringing in value and bringing them money. However, that's the short game. They're counting and relying on their husbands, wives, boyfriends, relationships to live in honeymoon phase their entire life. They don't live in the real world. So you think that you're famous because you have millions and millions of people following you. However, nobody knows who the hell you are, even the people that are following you. Oh, well, I liked one video she liked, but other than that, I really don't like who she is and I never see her content. So consider that they have a million people following them. And then of those million people, it's only a hundred thousand that accidentally like their page, but only 900,000 of those people are bots. And that's what's actually looking at their platform, who then gives them the likes who then gives them the con comments, which are all paid for. Because if your comment section has good, 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 unless you're Gary Vaynerchuk, who actually built a real following, that shit is paid for by. That means if you're someone like Motivan and you only have positive comments, they're either somebody that you know, like a Google review, or it's a bot that's telling her how wonderful she is. And that goes for her Instagram account as well. The other thing that goes into play when it comes to business is we're watching what women think business is associated to the government. So the government is doing bad business deals with countries like China. I say China, the government, but I don't know how, how communism in China actually works. I only know that you refer to it as China. However, China has a government and then communism and then a government business, like business. See what communism does. It confuses you. Then they have businessmen. Right? So if TikTok is ran by from somebody from Singapore and Clapper's ran by a dude from Texas, both are Asian, how does that affect the culture of the United States of America in the form of what content that they like, which they find value in? Go take a look at the middle. We don't want Middle Eastern filters. I'm sorry. That's a law. That's called, we had 9-11 terrorism planes fly into our buildings. We've had the Boston Marathon uh, bombing. We've had a lot of issues with the Middle East in this country. So you're acting as crimes against humanity with TikTok in our country by allowing viral content to fuel unrest in content. It is not legal to fuel a war. Palestine. So when it's freedom of assembly is what they're calling out, which, which is not really what's going on here. Freedom of assembly is thought collaboration and peaceful protests. Example, 
Palestine uh, violent protesters and even Black Lives Matter screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs with microphones and then saying it's peaceful protest, but then you believe that it's peaceful protest. It's not peaceful protest when you're violent against somebody that's called verbal abuse. So if you're telling me, this is how mentally ill these people are, you cannot be serious that watching someone scream and yell at someone else is peaceful. It's called verbal abuse. Meanwhile, the people that are screaming and yelling are mentally ill with anxiety. They go onto their platform and they're teaching each and every one of you that you are narcissists. You're not narcissists. You are protecting yourself from a Middle Eastern. So what am I telling you here? Americans, what am I telling you? I'm telling you they're trying to get you to drop your guard of reality, living in falsification of information to tell you, you tell yourself, well, maybe I, I am a narcissist. You're not a narcissist. Caring about yourself and your family or even doing something that gets you rewarded is a learning process in life. And if it's innocent, it's not narcissism. It's always about intent. So listening to these youth conversate around their version of anxiety is mental illness. Their lack of want and desire to actually educate from those who've come before them is a concern and a problem. These kids haven't even lifted a finger to protect this country. So how can they even say that they are against this country? Because they've never been a part of the country because they're too busy worried about themselves and their clout platforms, which is a whole nother country. When creating content, content in the ideology of what this, these platforms offer are education and entertainment. It should be a place for you to just really be unique in the most awkward shit as long as it's normal. And I'm talking, talking normal as a gradient of like this. Meaning what happened to feeling embarrassed about something and then taking a look at it and say, oh shit, I messed up. That, I should not have posted that. I'm talking about for you. I'm talking about the people who are the narcissists. You sitting on a bed with two kids saying, I feel like a youngster. And you think it's, it's funny is not illegal. It's just really boring and it has no value to anyone. Example A. Damn, I shouldn't have posted that. That's embarrassing. I didn't really have anything to say as I never do because I never want to get a reaction out of the audience. I just want to look cool doing it. Another example would be watching your, taking your camera out and videotaping your child as they fall and hurt themselves and then laughing about it. Oh shit, I feel so guilty about that. I cannot believe I did that. To the point where you actually cry. But those feelings associated to producing content have disappeared because what's attached to it is millions of people watching it, liking it, and laughing along with you. Cool, I wonder if I can get him to fall again. Repeat after me, doggy, 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 doggy. Now I'm gonna get him to finish my sentences like we're dating. So cute. And that is another example of how you should be embarrassed. Not making a brand deal with Pampers or flying out to LA and then showing your child crying his little eyes out. Like it looks like he got beat up. And then you saying, um, sh we're talking. While the, the host of the show is completely clueless about being a parent or being an auntie or being a, an adult around a child. And then you allow her to post the video of him looking upset. That's a moment where you should say, oh shoot, I shouldn't have done that. However, there's no connection in 
that process of reality because you live in illusion. They try to whitewash these kids into thinking that's normal behavior. However, they feel really bad in the process. Example, Paris Hilton. She doesn't care about the kids. She cares about what you think and the fact that she put on the life jacket on incorrectly. However, this is the also like, what the hell's the difference? Is you as audience said, it's on wrong, how dare you? But she's holding him. So now we're right fighting these people. However, looking at that again, why wouldn't you take the time out to look and get it done right? Because what your motto is, is that what it should be as an influencer is to educate an audience on how to do things appropriately and properly because that's called influence. Putting in car seats makes a huge difference for a new mom who doesn't feel like going to look it up on YouTube. And if you were a real good person, you would have actually offered up to an audience the education that you got instead of hiring someone on how to put your own child's car seats in the car. Instead of just saying the, coot the cutesy crew. While you awkwardly hold both of them again. So what we're dealing with when it comes to content creation and the awkwardness of it is it's prostitution, it's pandering, and it's convincing that these people are something when they're absolutely nothing, and then you falling for the manipulation of it all. The result of that is them denying that they've done any, anything wrong, and then you believing that they can be given another chance, although you've given them 20,000 chances, and they continuously never, never deliver in this Ponzi scheme of content creator. Whitewashed you. Why the hell would you want to whitewash people who you're trying to develop into success? Why would you whitewash people's pain away? That's why we're here on this planet to clean up the earth from those who've come before us as we evolve in evolution. To fight the, the fight against aliens, to fight the fight against good versus evil. To be human. Yet these people don't want to be human. If you don't want to be human, why the hell are you here? Oh, they want to look good. They want to have money. They want to have stuff. So they have stuff, money, and looks, but they have no friendship, no connection, no fun, no life, no expression, no um, creativity, no family, no nothing. They have nothing. They're literally the homeless. But they've got a Prada bag. And then you as audience say, that's who I want to be. Then they teach you off of gratitude and uh, situational shit that's literally like this. I was, not I was not afraid of bugs once, and then I was afraid of bugs. Well, I ain't afraid of bugs. But you're afraid of bugs. Now you're afraid because of her. A bug? You're afraid of a bug? Let me show you my chef cooking my food, and then I'm going to tell you clean eat. Meaning you don't offer up any form of cooking, except erotically standing in front of a stove that somebody else prepared. Sometimes you, you slip it through that you did hire a chef, and sometimes you keep it secret. Like whitewashing. They're all doing it. Um, yes, I'd like to place an order for salad. Uh, thank you. Make sure you separate this, 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 and this. Uh, now we're going to make a video. Boom, boom. Open the cabinet. Open the cabinet. Open the cabinet. Tap on the, the, the knife as you pretend to cut something that's already cut. And then you say what? 
Look at how pretty I am and look at how pretty my product is. And then you all fall for it because then they put music behind it to erotic, uh, like put you to sleep and then deliver on nothing. But look at her diamond. Now, when it comes to creating real content with your businesses, how do you tear down someone else's business as a collective? Is you all start working together to produce shit that, that they would absolutely hate. Honestly, that's kind of what you wanted to, would want to do. Not like violent. I'm talking like you go to a barbecue. You're not drinking beer, by the way. You're just at a barbecue. You're talking to your neighbor. You're talking about politics to your neighbor. Now, remember, remember that experience of what it used to be. Conversating and normal conversation of really getting some, you know, and then you go home and you tell your, your, your husband, you go, I was talking to um, Rustin and Rustin was telling me that he likes that dog happy. And I was just really intrigued by what he said. And now you've got communication of positivity moving from a conversation to a conversation with your spouse. However, that's not how it works anymore. It's like the comedy of, it's always a gimmick to get something for yourselves. They're using lust, so you think you have to use lust. So it's the compare game. You're running a business. You got a real business going, right? A standing business. The problem with producing content it is, a, is a distraction and it brings bad energy into the business. So it actually takes a strong business to be able to, and even Gary Vee doesn't even have a strong enough, a strong enough team to do what I'm able to do by myself. They're self-centered, they're self-righteous, they're youthful, they're like kids. And he tells them this and they still don't participate in it, meaning don't care what people think. And then they try to ego you. Don't, what is it? What is the other thing you said today? Don't care what people think. Don't live for the, the rewards, live for the process. Yet they're always looking for their bonus check. But they haven't done anything to, to get a bonus check. Then they go off to hang out with their friends at a, at a bar in New York City. They're bragging that they're in a bar in New York City. And then they're bragging that they work for Gary Vee. So now they think they, they're set in life. And then they go onto their platforms. And they don't really produce shit worth watching. Except for look at how hot I am, Tyler. Caring what people think. And they don't grow either because they don't want to because they think that they already got it made. Now he's pointing fingers over at Mona Van because she does have a maid. How can you teach clean when you don't even know how to clean your own apartment? How can you all teach anything when you don't do shit? So what does that tell you to the mechanic, to the electrician, to the, the person in, in desperate need? We need electricians. We need plumbers. We need doctors. We need lawyers. We need all sorts of different professions, not influencers. Meaning we should actually, and this is, I'm not even going to say this because you're going to like, you're going to shit yourself. No one under the age of 25 should be an influencer, a public influencer. Absolutely not. Immature, immature, immature. You literally let your child speak to Mike Tyson like that? Who is that kid going to be when he's 40? No boundaries, no law, no rules. He turns into the next Obama. What about the little shit that was at VCon 2022 where his mom is standing right there and he's cussing up a storm in front of Gary Vee and Gary Vee doesn't even say anything because Mona Van's standing over there going, look at me, look at me, look at me in her little brown, ugly outfit. 
while the little kid's getting turned on by her. And now where's he going to be in 20 years? Probably drug addicted with no career, honestly. All these kids peak in, in middle school and high school. And that means they just turn evil. So what we have at this time is a bunch of nobodies who pretend to be somebody, who then say that they, one day they're gonna be somebody, and then they get viral videos, and then they start pretending to be somebody, and they still don't do the work that it takes to become a person that's worthy of even listening to or looking at. So every time that video of the girl who says, one day I'm gonna be somebody, Gary V, and he said, you are somebody, Talk about consistently bringing people down. You're not, you're nobody. What you need to do is you need to go out and get a real job. That's what you all need to do. Because then you'll get your asses in a, an awakening mode. And, and that's only if the world realizes that these pieces of shit don't know shit, Sarah Trotta and Grace Dixon and whatever the hell else your names are at C Palms. Y'all don't know shit about shit. Now, our customers know shit. Not all of them, but the ones you like are the ones that don't know shit. So we don't actually live in equality. We live in the self-righteous, ego-driven world. But it doesn't really, honestly, even have to do with skin color unless you're black. Unless you're part of pride. So you create segregation while then spouting out you, we, you, you demand that we include you, but that's not how it works. That's called dictatorship. I don't really give a shit if you're gay or not, but you are not going to be raising children the way that you're raising children. You're not going to be raising children to where you show pictures of you and my kids, uh, Harlow and Monroe, and then you slide over and then they say, what do they say? They say, Ten, let's go for 100,000 likes off of these children's innocence. Because without them, you're just a gay dude. The only reason you have kids is to grow your clout. You'd rather be in a, a dog outfit with a leash around your neck and your boyfriend carrying you around on a pride parade, and you know it. Truth kind of hurts, doesn't it? Especially when it's been being blasted in your face in public. People like to hide behind the facade of who they are. I've called a mask. So that people will, they'll demand people like them through intimidation, through manipulation, through convincing, through a facade of a reality TV show. However, the reality TV show, it's been played out, it's over. It's like watching Mona Van in a, in a photo session. That's reality TV. So she doesn't have a problem lying to 44 million people. It's normal to her because that's how she's lived her entire existence. All you have to do is manifest it. You got to believe it and then you get to be it. And that's not how real life works. That's called total out of integrity. Are you out of integrity? In order to really build a social media presence, is that you have to be strong and grounded in self-awareness and the structure of your business of what you offer as a service, customer service, and be ready and prepared for egotistical um, driven employees of the battle zone of what it takes to grow a social media platform. An example would be a dental office who wants to have a good time at work, but they take it too far where now they're, they're um, always having a goofy time where they're drinking in the operatories. That's too, um, that's too friendly. That's inappropriate. That's illegal. That's against the law. 
Just because you're an influencer does not mean that you're going to be able to do whatever you want when it comes to the medical. But that's not how these kids think. They think that, well, I can film and record everyone. I don't know if you remember the HIPAA violation law. That means showing people's faces without their permission is illegal. That goes for movie sets, meaning you think that you can uh, record people on the street? That's illegal. That's someone's civil rights and a Democrat system that doesn't support Americans. They only support the agenda that they're fueling. What part of that don't you get? In order to build social media in your business, you have to slowly grow it. And it's a whole new ball game. It's not like easy. It's not easy at all, actually. The, the demonstration of how awkward it can become is the, the, the dude that's the orthodontist. He's weird as shit now. He probably was, is, a, is a fabulous orthodontist, likely, until he became an influencer. See, the influencer um, hook is the, the braces dude. He, had a, he has a brilliant career. He had a, a, I'm talking, they make millions. And he, he wanted more. So this is what's going to happen for, and I want you to be aware of this. I'm a, I'm a, um, a PA. My wife's a PA and she's selling leggings. She's a fabulous PA. Somebody in her office is really evil. But the reason she's evil to that woman is because she's selling leggings online and she's, She's not a normal person anymore because she's an alien in, an, in a woman's body, but she used to be a really good PA. So not only did we lose a PA, she's selling garbage. And now she calls herself more successful than ever. So now people are losing their lives and there's no one to fill the, the spot. And the one that comes up filling the spot went to school and got a shitty ass education. To where now PA isn't even a career any longer. It's like being a pharmacist and showing up at the White House and saying, I'm a pharmacist and I know what they put in, in, in drugs. And I want to let you know that I'm here for you and anything you need to get these laws passed to make sure that makeup is pure. I'm here for you. Just let me know what you need. That's not an activist. That's not a doctor. That's a game for social media. That's so that she is a, a, a wannabe makeup influencer can cut you out of the business. Do you understand that that's illegal? They're trying to create a monopoly in every which way so that only certain people can win and it's, they're wanting it to be the people from the Middle East. But that ain't gonna happen. That's why it's America first. Now, can you wrap your head around why they wouldn't want America first? Because those types of people create their versions of clean energy, whereas we as real Americans, we do the hard lifting. Americans do the hard lifting for the entire globe. People from France gossip behind each other's back and are very self-righteous and self-centered and egotistical. So are people from Ital Italy. Australian people, that was a whole nother ball game. They're weird as shit. The Middle East, oh my God, they're just atrocious. Everything about those people from other countries is hierarchy of expectation because that's their lineage. And they're going to try to come into our country and use social media to overthrow what we built as a country. I don't know how many times I've had to tell you all this. That you're allowing our country to be overthrown by the Middle East and by women like Mona Van so that she can close out your businesses. While she looks good doing it and smiles to your face. Did I remind you or need I remind you she took me to court for creating this kind of content? When this is a public, free country of a First Amendment right. So it only is acceptable for only people like Mona Van to speak how she needs to speak. That is in the eyes of those Democrats. 
That's called a quality to them. With that being said, I wanted to remind you that it is not easy to create a online presence. However, this book, and I'm not promoting the book, I'm just letting you know that this book is a really good effort to slowly progress you into what internet will offer you and your business. You have to have common sense. You have to have a backbone. You have to know that there are, these people are fucking evil. And that they're, if you're good at this, they're going to try to close your business down. Not just your business and social media, but your business in town. Like this brings devil, devil energy. Nobody wants you to succeed. But you still, when they don't want you to succeed, you still have to be nice to them. Although you want to play the game. How would the game look? I'm going to do one last thing. How would the game look? To somebody who's not a nice person. Awareness. So for example, I'm having a conversation with Gary Vee. And he's telling me how wonderful Motivand is. And I'm thinking to myself, she's a piece of shit. You know what I'm going to say? Well, that's really great information. Thank you so much. Blocked. That's also the game. Gary Vee's playing the game. Right now, I'm uncovering this little bitch and what she's up to. So what do I have to do? I have to tell people, dot, 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 dot. All in the form of a script. However, when you're saying it, you never make someone believe that it's true. You're actually watching people's reaction to it, which is also the game. Because if they support her and they do business with her, you know that they're not up to the right things either. Unless it's a pre-plotted plan to expose her ass. What is another way of hosting uh, the espionage of kindness? Hey, do you want to... I have a I have an opening for a ten minute meeting. Would you like to come in and share with your share with us your um, business proposition or your business plan? Yeah, I'd love to. Great. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. Awesome. Okay. What else do you have to say? Love. Advice. 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 Videotaping it. All exposed. It's as easy as that. How else do you operate when you're trying to expose someone with evil behavior? Show up to their parties. Find out what they're about. And then you do something that is more drawing of attention. It's like putting someone in their place without actually putting someone in their place. I go, always go the direct route of like telling you what a piece of shit Monavand is. However, I'm working a different playing field. I'm actually an educator in something different while Gary V plays a different game. So you're also wanting to know your role in this game of exposure for these people. See, what's different now and what's different in the future is that right now we're exposing this shit. See, it won't always be like this, which means the evolution of the internet will evolve. And it won't, won't always be, uh, it will never be like straight laced peacefulness. That's living in dreamland. And when you drop the ball, like they want you to, they, then you'll fall for everything. You'll fall for the whitewashing shit. You'll fall for the people who say that, that, you, that you're a narcissist. And that comes with the game of learning your self-awareness. The beauty of my life is I'm very self-aware. I'm also very aware of abusive people. I've been through a lot of shit. I never let it get me down and I never played the victim. All these people do is play the victim. Another way to tell, a telltale sign is how they speak to you and what they say to you. Are they talking about being the victim? Then you know that they ain't up to shit. Because a person who speaks to themselves as a victim in a way that's weak is not somebody you want educating on women's success. So there's a lot of variables that come into play when it comes to producing a awareness game around people's 
behavior of building the biggest building. Which I have done with Gary Vaynerchuk and Donald Trump and Tom Cruise and Adam Levine. So with all these guys that are successful and grounded in humanity, we've got different perspectives of where they play their roles in society to assist humanity. So that is what I have for you on this video of really wasn't on, it really was on the fly. However, I didn't expect it to go into 40 minutes. So I'm not sure when it'll download all the way through. I want to say thank you for following and liking and sharing. I don't really like it that you like follow and share to be honest with you i really prefer just to produce based off the education however i do want to express gratitude for it how did that make you feel see i don't want to give you validation for nothing i want you to validate through effort and results results as in um humility Shit, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> See, if you can be humble in the good stuff, if you can be humble with the good stuff, you can be humble in the bad stuff. Otherwise, you're on an, a bipolar roller coaster. These people are bipolar too, by the way. Bing, 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 bing. Bipolar is this, low emotion, high emotion, low emotion, screaming, crying, screaming of anger, crying, joy, crying. Schizophrenia is, who said that? I'm paranoid. What did they say? Like no self-awareness at all. And then there's anxiety, which is shaking. Ah. Oh. Weakness, it's actually weakness. Because you're not conviction in reality. You're actually living in illusion. And then you don't have the strength to tap into your own frequency. So you're like living in other people's spaces and shit. They call that, um, what do they call that? An empath. So this generation are all empath. Well, be, go be a fucking empath and go live in anxiety. Because I ain't no fucking empath. Learn boundaries, folks. See, there's the extreme of I know everything. And then there's the middle ground where you're like, well, I kind of know a lot, but let me hear what you have to say. That's how me and Gary operate. I really actually love what you said there. I totally understand, but I definitely want to show you this perspective so that we can kind of like morph the conversation and perspective shifts. And that's a beautiful relationship. And then there's the people that don't say anything, that have nothing to offer, and that would be someone like Motivan. All they fucking do is copy, they never live in experience or existence, they have nothing to fucking offer. And those people at the bottom, and those people with all ego shit, those are the ones smashing you in the middle so that we never get anything done except for they get paid and you cry your, in your, um, what do you call it? Whatever coupe that you're driving. Okay, everyone, we hit it to 44 minutes. Thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll see you on the fly next time.